Hey, what's up, Dark Edgy Camelot community? Appreciate you stopping in. Uh, this is pretty much just going to be a really fast pace, get it installed, get the reshade attached to the Camelot folder. Um, super easy. You're going to Google search reshade. Uh, it's going to pop up here. This is a legit website dot me. Download the brand new version. You don't need an old version. You don't need a to go on someone's Google Drive and download all their presets or any of that because it is extremely easy to experiment with this and just toggle things on and off while you micro study your screen and see the differences and how you can get everything exactly how you want it personally. I'm going to give you a base set of what I use that is uh, really nice. It seems like less is more because they'll start to overlap one another. They'll start to conflict with one another. Um, so some will give you brightness and then you find out that one does this but then it darkens things at certain distances so then they start to eat at each other. So less is more when it comes to the reshade. You're going to uh, download it. You're gonna pop, it's going to pop up in your downloads obviously. Um, when you actually install it, this pops up says it's for multiplayer, not for multiplayer, blah blah blah, don't worry about it. Um, browse. You're obviously going to go to your C drive, 86, uh, go to, to your Dark Age of Camelot folder, and tag your .exe. Make sure you hit Camelot and not cam test. <laughs> Easy to do. Anyway, the reshader is going to pop up, and it's going to, throughout the installation, it's going to ask you, would you like to download all of the presets that come with reshade? Do that. Get everything that it has to offer. Um, you're not going to use 90% of them, but might as well have them. Just install everything. It's not going to cause any problems. Uh, might as well have the entirety of what it does offer. So once it tags, it already embeds itself in the folder correctly. There's no moving around. There's no um, separate downloads. You're totally good to go. Uh, it's just going to be that easy. I know that some people just don't really like dragging and dropping into game files, and luckily it does everything for you. So once you get into the game, it's, uh, it usually pops up a little tutorial. Do the tutorial. It's worth it. You know, familiarize yourself with it. I'm extremely new with this as well. Um, but I have found the most, some of the most important ones to run. So this is just to give you like a basis of what I think works the best best and it's and it's not a bunch of them you can actually make manual adjustments to these presets so like if you pick a sharpening there's a place you can go in here where it, you can adjust the scale of things so once you get more comfortable with it because you can't really make a mistake so if you know you can just undo everything delete the preset um, you know add a new preset make a full new template and it's going to auto load every time you open the game uh, home page on your keyboard, the home button is going to be what pops the menu in and out. Super easy to use, guys. So the really important ones, in my opinion, is the Adaptive Sharpen. I'm, I'm not sure if OBS is going to record this correctly. I know the NVIDIA card actually shows all of these changes really well. But Adaptive Sharpen, if it does show, just keep an eye out because... Dark Age of Camelot has this really weird occurrence of everything has this white, glossy haze over it, I've noticed. The more I mess with this, the more I see... You can even look at the uh, textures in the game files um, and notice that all of the textures in the game files have a white haze over all the visuals in the game. That's uh, terrain, all the textures. It's really weird. I, I have no explanation for that. But the sharpens work really well on taking that away. And then you have some lightings that I'll show you. But adaptive sharpen in itself, without these, so these are defaults, right? These are just already have their little settings uh, aligned, and you just click them on. But you can manually mess with them. Adaptive sharpen, huge difference. If you look at the little in between slits on the hut over here, crazy. All of the bottom part of the hut is pretty much blurry, and as soon as you use that one preset, you have spaces in between. It's just crazy. So I love it, I love it. 
Um, that one's beautiful. I'm just going off memory on this one. Oh, colorfulness is crazy awesome. I can't, like, it, when you toggle this on and off and you're looking at things like green, like the grass, it's nuts, dude. So colorfulness in itself. You can look at my cloak. is almost gray, bland. Boom, now it's golden. How it's probably supposed to look. That's like the golden inlay on the side. The tent goes from, like, almost white crappy color to uh, the golden color you would expect to see straw. So colorfulness and adaptive sharpen, we already have that difference. Love those. Um, then the one that I'm extremely, so I've had mixed feelings on this one. Adds blurriness and adds darkening that I don't like. It conflicts with the sharpening. So that's the problem. You see, you, a lot of the time you'll get the reshade and you'll go in and you'll go, well, obviously I want this, obviously I'd want that if the game doesn't have it, but they start to fight one another. And you start to undo some of the other's changes because it's overriding. So I would not mess with the uh, FXAA, to be honest. This HDR, the fake HDR, is so awesome when it comes to colorization and lighting. Definitely use it. It's going to darken, of course, but it when it darkens, it smooths out things. You get rid of that white haze that is just in everything. So that's one of my favorites. Yes, it does darken your screen, which you can combat in other ways. I don't mind it being a little bit darker because I don't like that. I don't like that white haze. It drives me crazy. I don't know why everything looks like that. So the fake HDR takes that completely away. <laughs> that one's great to use. Levels, too dark with the HDR, right? And I don't see any level depth. This is like a different type of sharpening in my opinion. You'll see a lot of people use it. Not worth it. Don't use it. Not in my opinion. Use whatever you want, but I don't think levels is worth using with the combination of things that I've already found out that work really well. The Luma Sharpen, that is pretty cool. You get a little bit of brightness back without getting the white haze back. So you can use the Luma Sharpen also. It may actually be uh, worth it with the other Sharpen, but I've been using the Fine Sharp. It seems way more intense. So if you see how I'm toggling these on and off, Luma gives me a little bit of brightness back, but nothing sharpens like this fine sharp. So it's up to you. You know, if you want to try to combine them and you don't think that they're fighting one another, that's fine. Um, definitely don't use, you know, looking at it now, honestly, might be okay using them both because you get you the darkening doesn't become an issue yeah I'd say use the Luma sharpen and the mode to fine sharp once you get more proficient at using this there's ways to go in here and actually change the settings of these individual presets so that they don't these are like templates basically they're just ready to run when you toggle them on but you could probably go in there and scale how much fine sharp is doing and what it's doing. Um, I know that sharpening works in a really weird way where it adds not only like shadowing, but what happens is if you sharpen things too much, it tends to start to show these like weird black dots because it starts to add so much shading and tries to dig into the visuals so much that it, it'll eventually just be a big black dotty mess. So you can play around with it. I think that the templates and the presets are actually adjusted pretty well. So Luma Sharp, we're at Luma Sharpen, Fine Sharp, HDR, Fake HDR, Colorfulness, and then the Adaptive Sharpen here. Yeah, dude, Adaptive Sharpen on its own is just wild. So how many do we have right now? One, two, three four, five. We got five up. Um, the last thing I would use is going to be colorfulness. Did we already tag her? We probably did. I think we did up top. Yeah, 
I don't think that I would really recommend using much more. Um, just because we're making the video, let's experiment together. Yeah, I don't think the SMAA is really necessary. You can tell, like, in some ways you may actually have some improvements. It seems to thicken. No, graphics bounce around. So the SMAA... Yeah, I probably wouldn't stress on, on using it. It may have some benefit, but the problem is the textures are moving around. All the still textures are bouncing and moving around on accident as my character moves and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't use SMAA. So this is my recommendation. Mode 2 Fine Sharp, Luma Sharpen, the fake HDR, the colorfulness, and the adaptive sharpen. Try that out on your spare time, and I don't get screen disturbance. That's one of my big things, is like the, as soon as you start trying to go really heavy and add all the extra stuff, you get texture popping in like this weird static way. And so I've just been playing around and trying to combat that. It'll even start to mess with your eyes. I've played games since, on the computer since StarCraft 1 and shit, like 8 years old. I've never had motion sickness, I've never had like disturbance with my eyes feeling weird and stuff. But if you start stacking a bunch of stuff with this reshader and they're like fighting one another, you'll notice it's, it's like hard to focus because things are not settled. So don't use too many things because your graphics will start doing weird stuff. But that's pretty much it, guys. It's really simple to use. I've, in the past, even I was turned off by using the reshade because a lot of the guys make these tutorials and have everything, oh, download this old version that's supposed to work with Dark Age of Camelot. But the new ver everything new works. So just get the new version, install all the presets, which is going to ask you. You're not just going to be in a confused state of, well, which one should I download? Just grab everything that it has to offer. It's going to ask you in the installation process. It tags everything for you. You don't have to move everything around in your game folders. This is extremely user-friendly. Uh, don't stress on using it. And people that are not familiar with this type of stuff can use it extremely easily as well. Once they toggle those little guys on, they're never going to have to mess with it again. It automatically turns on when the game starts and it automatically turns on your presets when the game starts. There's no toying with it every time you log in either. So it's family, friends, all of uh, the people that you normally think, uh, I'd have to set it up for them. You could probably walk them through it really easily or show them the video um, that I've made and we're good to go. But thank you guys for watching. Super simple. I hope you guys all enjoy. Have a great night and day and afternoon because who knows when you watch this. <laughs> Sub to the channel, it helps.